Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Lean Tossup CDL Major 3 Finals, or Major 3 Championship, I guess. Oh, Major 3 Tournament Podcast. Uh, I am joined, as always, by my uh, by my guest, uh, Ryan, uh, from at CDL Metrics on Twitter. Uh, Ryan, you excited for this weekend or not? Very excited, as always. Um, happy to see my Minnesota Rocker go a perfect 5-0 and in the group stage. And I am very much prepared for them to go 0-2 this major because that's just how it goes in this league. Um, but no, in all seriousness, very, very excited. Um, we do only have four specific matches to talk about because the rest of them are unknown and we need to find out who the winners are uh, of the first ones. But we've got... Those four games, we've got some futures to discuss, both within Major 3 and for end-of-season stuff um, that we'll dig into a little bit. And uh, yeah, I, I definitely see a little bit of value here and there on the board, and I'm excited to break it down. Yeah, sounds good. I, I am, uh, as you said, I am not excited for uh, for uh, Seattle, for Minnesota to go 0-2 drop, because I, I have... Earlier this week, when they were still eight to one to uh, win the major, I put a lot of bets on them at eight to one, and I got some plus three fifty to make the finals. And I'm actually very happy with that number. So I'm very Me happy. Me too. I I'm in I'm in that boat with you, but I just I need to prepare you for when they go zero and two, and people are scratching their heads because that's just how this team does it sometimes. Um, and yeah, I I'm used to it at this point. But yeah, hopefully. Good things are ahead for the rocker. Hopefully, we always hope for good things. And and to be honest, again, and um, the our uh, our friends over at uh, Best of Three Network, they always say, Attach always gets a, sli- a slice of the pie. He always wins one tournament. Kind of thing. If it's gonna be one, if there's anyone. It's this one. It's yeah. gonna it's yeah. gonna be this one. But anyways, we will talk about futures here in a second. Um, let's talk about the the matches themselves first, and then we'll kind of talk about um about the futures, who we think to win that, and maybe some talk on some other futures too, because there are some interesting ones. Now would be kind of the time to start talking about Rookie of the Year and um, MVP and, and all that stuff. So, first game of the week. So actually, this is kind of interesting. I'm looking at my... I'm looking at Bodog here. They are saying that the first game is at 3 o'clock. The CDL has come out and says that the first game is at 4.30 and that's Seattle at New York, and they actually have Seattle at New York at 4.30, but Bodog, for some reason, has Minnesota, LA at 3. So, I don't know what's up with that. I actually, I'm actually still unsure as to why the game is even starting at 4.30, but then all the games on the weekend are starting at 1, but whatever. The CDL apparently has just decided to throw out the scheduling window. Can't, uh, Toronto, again, this major is in Toronto, and Toronto, of course, is in Eastern time, so I have no idea why you would want to move it up to 4.30, but whatever. So, Basically, let's assume Seattle versus New York is the first game. So we'll talk about that one first then. Seattle plus one and a half minus 185. New York minus one and a half plus 140. Seattle plus 130 on the money line. New York subliners minus 170. Um, and over four and a half plus 165 under four and a half minus 220. Now, I, I saw this and my model actually, I, I had my model before I saw this number. My model has New York as about a minus 147 favorite winning. It's about 60 or, 60 or so percent of the time. Um, so I actually do like New York here. I don't, I have this about a 3-2, so I don't know necessarily about the, uh, I don't know necessarily about the minus one and a half. I, I actually have everything pretty close. I actually have Seattle as a slightly better hard point team. New York is a better search and destroy team. I, I actually, I kind of have the, the, the hard points kind of split, but then I kind of have New York pulling away in the game six. So I, I don't hate the over four and a half here, honestly. I have over forty over four uh, four and a half at about forty percent clip. So that could potentially be a play here. I'm kinda kinda stay away, but I kind of do think the play here is subliners money line. Um what are your thoughts on this? Do you kind of agree with me in that or are you are you gonna try to take Seattle here? Yeah, I I'm gonna go Seattle. Uh this again just feels to me like a classic toss-up or almost a toss-up match and in any of those the plus money just looks like value so Seattle at plus 130 I do like I like that more than the uh, plus a map and a half at minus 185 um just because there's a lot of unknowns with it getting to a map five and I'll again in a toss-up series I'll just take the higher payout generally um 
so yeah, I lean Seattle. My model very much like Seattle in this match. Uh, even with New York's recent run of success, my model weights recent games a little differently than yours. It, it weighs them a lot less. Um, so it still has these New York games with Clayster and, and, uh, and Neptune, you know, baked in pretty heavily. Um, so that's the reason I have Seattle as a pretty sizable favorite, 63% favorite. But you take those, uh, those old games, you know, into account, maybe throw, don't throw them out because they're data, but, but definitely skew them down. I can definitely see this match being more of a 50-50. But even if that's the case, Seattle's still, I think, good value at plus 130. Um, yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, Seattle did have a better stage three just record than New York. Seattle went four and one to New York's three and two, unless I'm forgetting something on Seattle's end. Um, I will say this is the first major that we've seen this year where the map veto advantage for the higher seed is skewed down quite a bit. Um, and that's just because we have a new control map. We've been playing Berlin control now for... Um, this stage we played it at the pro am as well um so we're getting data on that but that does matter quite a bit in terms of like there's no coin flip now in the past when we had two control maps the high seed vetoed the one they didn't want to play and they played the one that was left over now with three maps right seattle's going to veto the first control new york's going to veto one and then we play the one that's left over that that's how control veto should go, in my opinion. That's how we've been doing that. Um, you know, since I can remember in COD, there's always a third map in that third mode. So, um, so yeah, a, a slight disadvantage compared to the earlier majors for those teams with higher seeds. In this case, this is Seattle has the higher seed in this matchup. So, um, in terms of the control we're going to get, it is interesting. New York still have not played Berlin control at all. Um, they're eight and six on Gavutu, five and five on Tuscan. So middle of the pack um, on both maps, maybe a slight preference to Gavutu. Seattle have played a good amount of Berlin. Um, they've actually played more. Actually, sorry, I almost said they played more Berlin than Gavutu on the year, but that's incorrect. It's close though. They do like playing Berlin control um, and New York have not played it. So that that strikes me as a New Yorker going to veto that and Seattle's going to veto Gavutu where they're one and six. And we probably get a Tuscan where I give the slight edge to Seattle. Um, and then these teams are pretty close in hard point and in search. Uh, I think you can make a case that the most likely scenario is that Seattle gets their hard point map win and New York gets their own. And then they split the searches the same way. So if it's coming down to control for me, I will lean with Seattle. Um, I think they're kind of a sneaky underrated control team. Do they? They do go a little hot and cold. Um, like when they win controls, it's usually pretty convincingly like a three zero or a three one. Um, and when they lose them, they they do generally lose in a round five. So if you just take round win percentage in control, Seattle's a very very good team, but they they do slip up in those round fives uh, a little too much maybe. But nonetheless. Should be a good series. I'll take the underdog at a slight price um, and uh, and back them because, yeah, I, I know New York's been hot since the Pro-Am, but Seattle has really turned things around as well. So I like Surge. Yeah, it's... Um, I don't know. I'm probably going to take New York here. I, I can see the argument for Surge, though. Like, this, this Surge team, they, they, do, they do things, right? Like, sometimes you'll see them you will see them make amazing plays and you'll see them take out great teams. Like um, they took down a thieves team that is not horrible apparently. Cause they, they, well, they, the thieves team beat Boston, but then they got blown out by optic and then Florida, which I am not including the, the, as a, as a technical note, I'm not including the, the thieves versus mutineers tie break game, which by the way, isn't, I thought they made the rule. So there couldn't be a tie break. But then somehow there was a tie break, and then the one team just actively threw the tie break. Because, like, gotta love this. Smartly, I would say. No, I, I yeah. also am not including that in my data. I, I did initially because I was like, well, yeah, they might have been throwing, but these matches were close. Like, every map was pretty close anyway. So I was like, eh, the more data, the better. And then I looked into it again. I was like, eh, no, I'll just, there's no reason to keep it if there's any question that 
you know, one or both teams were tanking. It was clear that one was. So, um, so yeah, I, I threw it out too. And I agree. I, we talked about it last week, the crazy tiebreaker scenarios where um, we could have had eight teams at two and three. Um, that actually didn't end up getting close. Uh, I want to say like two teams or three teams were tied at two and three. Um, but we ended up still with a crazy tiebreaker scenario where two teams were dead on tied and we needed to play an extra match. So again, just further proof that maybe we need to play more matches or iron out the tiebreaker rules a little better. Um, Cause yeah, you can get a goofy scenario where you're LA thieves and you go, you know what? We don't want to play optic in round one. So let's just throw this and like props to them. I think that was the right move. Um, and I think if you're Florida, you know, you win that match and now you get to play Optic, who they have actually did knock out in Major 2. Let's not forget that. Um, so I think Florida's thinking, like, we can beat Optic. And if you're going to play Optic, I think you want to play them in round one, right, on day one. So we'll see how it all shakes out between those teams. But, yeah, that was a very, very interesting note from last week. But I'm on the same page of, Definitely not including that match in my data. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's the thing. I think that it's yeah, it's interesting with they they need to just play more matches. Hundred percent, they need to play more yeah. matches. I don't understand why we can't only play five matches. We showed that the technology exists when we had multiple streams going, although the quality dropped off significantly. Next year, we no more no more of this five matches. But anyways. No, the surge team can do things. I just the this is kind of desperation time for the subliners, right? You lose this, you fall into losers, and then if you lose that first game, you don't get any CDL points, and then that means that they could be really in danger of not making champs, right? The surge team though is pretty strong, right? So, I one of the reasons why I think subliners even beat Optic is because it was desperation time for them too. Like they had to win that game. That was like you have to win this game to make champs. If not, then like you're not going to make champs. And I think. I think they win this game and then they lose their next game and then maybe they go on a little bit longer run in losers bracket or whatever. But I think, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see the subliners win this game and, and knock Seattle out just because they have the ability to just be off, on and off, depending on the day, give or take. Um, the next match, I believe it's the next match. No, it is not the next match. They really screwed this up. Okay. Well, you know what? Whatever, screw it. We're just going to go with the next match that Bodog says. Minnesota versus Thieves. Minnesota minus 1.5 plus 105. Thieves plus 1.5 minus 135. Minnesota to win on the money line minus 225. Thieves plus 170. Over 4.5 plus 165. Under 4.5 minus 220. I love Minnesota here. I I, I am high on this Minnesota team. Um, I think we're going to talk about um futures later um but my model loves them to win 3-1 or, or better in this case uh i've got i've actually got this uh yeah i've got this under four and a half like significant amount of time i got this my model has this as a 3-1 i've got minnesota winning this 83 ish percent of the time um huge favorites in the hard point search and destroy control is a bit even but then they close it out in, in game four hard point um i think that this is a really good. This is a really good matchup for Minnesota. I know like, you're gonna say, "Oh no, you can't uh, watch. They'll screw this up." I got yeah. I got the minus one. I've got the minus one and a half about sixty-ish percent of the time. I I mean, here's the thing. I've got I've got a bunch of Minnesota futures on this, specifically Minnesota to make the finals, which would be great if they win this game. That means they would be only two more. If they win this game, that means this, that means they only be two more matches away from making the finals. So that'd be great. And I think this is a pretty easy matchup. I think Thieves showed us they lost to Seattle and then they beat Boston candidly, but then they lo- they got crushed by Optic. And then we're gonna ignore the Florida, but they showed they're a better team than Boston. Great. Okay, Boston's in the losers bracket. All right. Minnesota is five and zero. Minnesota beat Phase, and they beat Ultra, who also that Ultra team is actually looking really good right now. I think this is this team is either the best or the second best team in the game next to Optic. And uh, honestly, depending on on when they're playing Optic and and what that line is, I may or may not be taking them against Optic. To be honest, if if it's if they're playing Optic in the winners bracket finals, which they definitely could be, the win they'll play the winner of Ultra Phase. But if they're playing Optic in the winners final, I actually probably if if all if they're the favorites, they probably actually take Optic to to hedge out the the uh, make the championship bet. But probably would take Minnesota there too. So. Um, 
Yeah, I'm I'm high on this Minnesota team. Now you're a Minnesota fan, so tell me why I'm wrong. Yeah, no, this is interesting. So we're back to back games uh, that we're talking about. We are on opposite sides of because I do think there's maybe a little bit of value on LA Thieves specifically with the map spread. Um, and that's not a, I'm not knocking Minnesota. I have Minnesota as a 61% favorite in this match, which is maybe a little lower than you might think. Um, again, it's, it's not overweighting on uh, recent games. It's, it's the whole body of work for both teams, um, which, you know, if you take the whole year into account, I think you'd go, oh yeah, Minnesota and LA Thieves are pretty close, but this run that Minnesota has been on has catapulted them up to, you know, a 10% over 50% favorite. So that's not nothing. Um, but the reason why I, I really like the map spread on LA Thieves is just because I don't think you could find a better match where you have a clear team that's better at search and destroy and a clear, I don't want to say super clear team that's better at hard point because Minnesota has been getting better but I do still think Thieves are the better hardpoint team at the end of the day. And Minnesota, kudos to them. They remain the best search and destroy team in the game by a decent margin. Um, but yeah, just just running through kind of how the map vetoes are going to play out. You're right. The control should be close. I don't really know what they're going to play. These teams like to switch it up on control maps a decent amount. Um, I think Thieves, the first veto that's clear to me is Thieves veto Tuscan which they're two and eight on um, Berlin and Gavudu combined. They're 11 and six. So you throw out Tuscan um, and then Minnesota's kind of in the middle on all of their maps. They're two and one on Berlin. Fine. Gavudu four and three. Fine. Tuscan five and six. So the one map that they're below 500 on, I think is the map that thieves are going to veto anyway. Um, so yeah, that the, the the like map strengths and control match up pretty well. So that's maybe a true toss up when you're talking about game three. Um, and then, yeah, then you got to talk about hard points and searches. So again, Minnesota improving at hard point unquestionably, right? They, they just beat phase in a sweep, which included a beat down on Bocage, which was honestly one of the more shocking results of the year, I think. And I know Minnesota was on a hot streak leading up to that match, but and I know FaZe has been fading on Bocage a little bit after their just absolutely dominant start on that map to start the year. Um, but still, seeing Minnesota come out and, and beat them by, I want to say, over 100 points is remarkably impressive. So with that being said, I think Thieves are happy to veto Bocage. Uh, it's the map they play the least. If you think of Thieves, they're a better team when they have more ARs in their hands, bigger maps. Um, and that's not Bocage. So I think clear vetoes for Thieves, at least in hard point and in control, it's Bocage and it's Tuscan. Minnesota can kind of play with whatever um, control-wise. Hard point, if you're not going to play Bocage uh, and you're Minnesota, like, despite the recent run of success, it's like you want to play Thieves on Gavudu. Minnesota's 4-4 four and four on that map. Thieves are 9-4. and four. They've played it five more times and they've won all of those games um they're also nine and four on tuscan which is minnesota's worst map at one and six and minnesota's not good at berlin they're three and eight where la thieves are seven and five so i think if you're minnesota i i don't know it, it's interesting right because minnesota their best map is bocage which is a very fast map the next fastest map is tuscan which they're horrible at um then their next best one is Gavudu, which Gavudu and Berlin are they play somewhat similar. Um and Thieves are good at both, but they're better at Gavudu. So uh, it's it's tough. To me, I think we're gonna get a Berlin Gavudu hard point series. Um, uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if Minnesota take a Tuscan. And then you go to search, it's a huge mismatch. Um yeah, Minnesota 18 and 9 on the year. They have been good with Major Maniac in the lineup. They've been good with Havoc. Nothing has changed. They're just very, very good at Search and Destroy. Maybe that will fall off eventually, but against a Thieves team that struggled all year with the same lineup, like it just it seems like Minnesota should get the Search and Destroy wins they need. So with all that being said, I think most likely scenario is a Minnesota win in five. And 
if we're just looking for thieves to cover a map and a half, we'll take that all day. So that's where I lean in this game. We'll talk about futures in a later in a, a little bit later, but um but yeah, right now I kind of lean thieves plus a map and a half, but I, I completely understand if you don't want to get in the rockers way because they are so hot and LA Thieves do seem to be this team that's always at least lately kind of hovering between wins and losses pretty um inconsistently so that's where i lean the plus one and a half with thieves but you know if you're going to take rocker i don't mind it the one way i'd play them would just be to like hammer rocker against thieves specifically in search and destroy um and maybe if you want to get interesting maybe take the plus points in the hard point maps but again if we're going to play on those bigger maps, those are more blowoutable maps, right? Like Berlin and Gavudu, the average point differential is anywhere between like 60 and 90 points. So the, if you get a plus, you know, something small, not going to mean as much if they're playing on those maps, which I think favor Thieves anyway. But if you want to take Minnesota, you know, minus a round and a half and search, that could be an easy win if Thieves just still aren't prepared and Minnesota just does what they does. Do, do what they do excuse me yeah it's late <laughs> it is it is late yes i mean it's interesting i i'm not getting in the way of this rocker team i i do like them weirdly enough we don't have like map spreads like we don't have at this point at least we don't have like map one hard point spreads yet maybe we'll have that by uh thursday hopefully we will um next up ultra versus phase ultra plus one and a half minus 125 Phase minus one and a half minus one oh five ultra money line plus one sixty four phase money line minus two twenty over four and a half plus one seventy under four and a half minus two twenty five. So a week ago I was on this podcast, I sat here in this chair. I, I don't know if you're sitting in the same chair you were sitting in a week ago, I Ryan. Am. Same chair, okay. <laughs> I th- we I sat here and I said that it, the next time Ultra plays Phase, I'm not gonna bet on Ultra unless they're playing Scrappy. Well, I'm here to tell you that my model is gonna make a liar out of me. And and here's the thing, I I I, I did not like. This is not a like. I I truly believe that last week. And this is not a this is not a bet on Toronto too. It, it, that's the other thing to note is that the Toronto team has looked a lot better the last games. They swept. Um, they swept Paris, which is, again, that's what they should be doing. Then they beat London 3-1. That also could have been a 3-0 had that control gone a little differently. They just kind of got a little bit behind there. I think they let an extra tick in, so then they had to go on offense. They couldn't pull off the offense, but then they, they did really well in the in the hard point as well. This phase team is struggling right now. I mean, this phase team lost to Optic, which, okay, that's fine. Then they got swept by Rocker, which, again, is is I think that's a good sign for Rocker. And then, but that performance against LAG was not particularly convincing, because and again, my model when it looks at this, my model says it, it looks at the quality of your opponents as well when you're doing that, right? So for example, like okay, you lost to Optic, oh well, right? Then oh okay, you lose to Rocker. Well, Rocker's doing pretty good, so that's okay. But then map one, they got destroyed on a hard point against one against. Against against LAG, and Paris had just beaten LAG. Like Paris had beaten LAG in, in, in basically one hard point, and that second one was also a very close hard point too. So now you're basically saying, and again, even then the fourth hard point, yeah, phase one covered the spread, but they didn't let's lay them massively. So now you're basically saying that phase is functionally just a little bit better in terms of slaying than LAG, and LAG is roughly on par with Paris. And then this ser- the searches are not going particularly well for this for this phase. Well, actually, you know, they did six o, they six o uh, lag, which again you as you should. But then they basically six o they 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 got six o I or no it wasn't six o I think they won one round and then they got destroyed by Minnesota. Like this phase team is really struggling, and this might be a little bit of figuring them out, and this. This ultra team is is surging at the right time. They are surging at the right time, and I do really like them here. I'm gonna put a bet on them now. Again, I'm not betting them yet. They're at plus one sixty four to win 
plus one, like minus one twenty five on on the spread. This is I, I would. This is not going to close here. There's going to be a ton more money on on phase. But again, remember here the fact that this line again, this line has actually already been bet up. I believe Toronto opened at like plus one thirty seven. At least that was on bet three six five. I think they opened like plus one forty here. So you're already seeing twenty points plus to to, to towards phase. I think this game is probably you're probably going to get Toronto like plus two hundred, maybe plus one hundred on the spread, and then that's when you unload. I think this will this will come to plus two hundred on Thursday, and I think that's when you can you can really sink in on ultra because the thing of it is like maybe this ultra team's figured out a hard point, or maybe this phase team is just kind of bad at hard point. But that was really the one issue they had, right? Because whenever Toronto's played phase, right, like the the the, the basically the last time they played the regular season. It was the Toronto versus Phase. It was Toronto. They took them. Toronto took them to Game Five. They lost the search, but Toronto won the game. They went. They were about to go two, three, five, but they were. They got screwed in the hard point. They played each other in the group stage of the kickoff of of the uh, Pro Am Classic. Toronto won the search and destroy, but then lost the control in both hard points. So it was three one. If this Toronto, t- if this, and again, this is a big if, right? I mean, we talked about before this Toronto team being physically incapable of winning a hard point. Well, that seems to have fixed itself at least a little bit. If this Toronto team is better at hard point, like, watch out. And again, just because FaZe would lose here and, and fall to the loser's bracket, like, they still, like, again, they're, they'll, if they lose this game, they will play Paris. So good luck, have fun. Um, Then you're going to end up dealing with the winner of. Minnesota slash the winner of the loser of Minnesota Thieves. So like that loser and then also pair breach. So you're going to play that. So you might get breach again. They own breach. Then I don't know the exact next one that would fall to them. Um, but you're still not going to have, you're still going to avoid Seattle. I think at that point, then they'd play. I think they'd play the loser of. Um, well, actually maybe it could be surge, but. Then I think you you basically play someone from the other side of the bracket, which isn't particularly scary outside of say optic. That they could probably beat mutineers, they could probably beat subliners, they could beat surge. Then you're gonna like their their path through a losers bracket isn't bad. They can they can kind of go on a bit of a run there, as could subliners. We have we just talked about them a little earlier. But I'm I'm kind of high on I'm, well not so much high on the ultra team. I'm kind of low on this phase team. This ultra team could actually be pretty good. Like we talk about. Uh, about Minnesota and like attached getting a slice of the pie and, and that's fine. And I think if there's gonna be one it could be this. But this is one where I think Toronto could do something and and remember, right, Toronto is um we'll talk about futures later obviously, but I'll just quickly point out Toronto is seven to one. A large part of that has to be that has to be because Toronto's playing phase round one. So if Toronto gets past phase, that number would be a lot smaller. And that's an important thing to note as we as we go forward on this. So let's hear your thoughts. Are you on Toronto or are you on FaZe on this one? I'm kind of on neither. <laughs> With all that being said, I if you're going to make me pick, I'll go with you on FaZe just slightly, but um there's some there's some real concern with Atlanta. You're you're right about that. I still think they're a great team. I still have them as the number two team in the league, just in terms of power rankings. But, um, yeah, these Bocage results are are concerning, very concerning, right? Because Faze come out, they play Rocker last week. They get swept in the series, but that series started with a two fifty to one forty three loss on Bocage, which. I mean that Atlanta does that to teams. They don't have that happen to themselves. Like Atlanta was far and away the best Bocage team, and now I don't know if they are. Um, right? Because you lose by over a hundred to Minnesota, who is, you know, an improving team, but that's that's still not great. Um, and then the next day you rebound in a series versus LAG, but again, that game one Bocage you got blown out in. Um on the flip side, Toronto is playing that map, and they look all right. They played against Paris. They won by 52. That might not sound like a lot, but on Bocage, that's a decent win. Um, so, yeah, like if, if Toronto want to square up on Bocage, that could be interesting. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I have Toronto as the better search and destroy team, just slightly, but still, if they're the better search team, I think control is close to a toss-up honestly now that we have berlin in the mix right because 
If you're Atlanta, your one go-to control map is Tuscan. They're 9-2 and two on that map. The other two maps combined, they're 11-9. and nine. If you're Toronto, let me flip to their control real quick. Tuscan, which is the map you don't want to play against FaZe, you're already bad on. You're five and nine on that map. So perfect. That lines up well because on Berlin and Gavudu, you are combined eight and three. So I would actually say Toronto could be favorites in the control. Um I kind of lean that they'll play Berlin. I, I think just FaZe are more willing to play Berlin because it is still a relatively new map. Um and their you know win percentage between Berlin and Gavudu is still pretty similar but better on Berlin, slightly. So, you know, if it's a Berlin control, it's anyone's game, but maybe slightly into Toronto. I like Toronto just slightly in the search and destroys. It probably splits if it gets to two of them. And yeah, they there's a shot that Toronto could rip off a hard point, which is, you know, it, it's <laughs> surprising to talk about FaZe struggling in hard point, but right now they are in a map that they had it felt like an auto win on any time they played. So, yeah, I, I think FaZe will still let Bocage through. I think they'll veto Berlin because that's what they do. Um, so if you're Toronto, if you can scratch out a Bocage victory or, you know, maybe take them out on Tuscan, Toronto's not very good at Gavudu whatsoever. So in all likelihood, I think we get a Bocage tuscan hardpoint, which could be a really fun series if that's the case. I think Toronto's got a shot, but um, it's always scary going against FaZe. I, yeah, this, to me, screams just stay away. We'll learn a lot from this match, that's for sure. I think the loser of this match can go on a nice run, as you mentioned, kind of laying out the path of what that would look like. Um, but yeah, I don't know, part of me really wants to, I talked about it last week, buy into FaZe because... You know, they just came off of that optic loss. Minnesota are red hot. I think that'll rebound. That obviously didn't happen. So part of me wants to just kind of use the same logic again and go, all right, FaZe are really at the bottom now, despite the win over LAG. I think people still remember that Rocker series more. Um, and Toronto, people are like, oh, yeah, they, they cruised to relatively easy victories last week against not so great teams, but they were still very convincing. Um, so I think Toronto might be a popular play, might drive the phase number down. If it does drive it down enough, I might go with phase. But uh, yeah, again, right now where it's at, I'm not in love with either side. I, I'm talking myself into both sides. And whenever that's the case, you know, it's it's more likely a stay away than anything. So that's where I lean on that game. But it, I think I'm probably most excited for that game out of any for Thursday. Yeah, some of these games could actually be kind of real snoozers this probably would be the best one this one in maybe minnesota would be pretty good optic florida i mean it's it is florida you never know what can happen with florida but yeah one thing i will say about ultra phase though is that you have way more faith in there being ultra sharps than um just people laying the points with phase that's uh that's fair that's fair like yeah. you 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 generally have to like there's certain teams that always get bet up in the CDL and that's phase optic thieves to an extent. Like I, one of the reasons I haven't pulled the trigger yet on Minnesota is because I think that line's going to come down. I, I like, it's kind of, it's plus 100 at bet three, six, five plus one Oh five on Bodog. Kind of think it's going to come down. I, I think you're maybe going to get maybe plus plus one ten on the pl minus one and a half. I think people are going to find themselves betting thieves subliners get some action, but it's mostly just like optic thieves phase and boston to a lesser extent boston does get some money sometimes when they're better but yeah i, I think there is something to be said for I, I don't think ultra generally doesn't get a ton of they get some sharp money sometimes but i think there's just way too many phase you might be too much phase is the best team you're giving me minus 105 on like i i don't like i think if you're telling people that toronto's much more favorite to cover the one and a half than phases to cover the minus one and a half i think people are gonna be like i'll take phase any day and I think that's that's an issue. I think you're going to see a lot of money on face. So we'll have to see. Anyway, the last game that we know about here, Optic versus Florida. Optic minus 2.5, plus 160. Florida plus 2.5, minus 210. Optic minus 525 on the money line. Wow. Florida plus 340, over 3.5, minus 190, under 3.5, plus 145. I, um... 
I have this obviously as optic favorite. I have optic 95% chance to win. I actually have the optic 3-0, um, so that's cool. Um, I have this over 3.5 just 51% 51, 51 of the time, so technically the under 3.5 is actually a pretty good bet there. I, I wouldn't mind betting the minus 2.5. I just think Optic is a better team, and outside of that game against Subliners when they when they lost, which again, also, it was that that you can also view that as like, this is Subliners' last chance here. I, uh, I kind of, th- I kind of like Optic here, and I kind of like Optic to win big here. Um, what are your thoughts here? Do you see, uh, are you seeing the Optic 3-0, or do you think, uh, do you think maybe, uh, maybe Florida could have a chance here at the, I mean, it's plus, plus two and a half, minus 210 is high, maybe the plus one and a half is a decent price. What are your, what are your thoughts? Yeah, um, again, yeah, this this is an interesting match, right? Because Florida took out Optic at the last major. Um, Optic was not... I would say that was the lowest point we've seen Optic all year was kind of the tail end of Stage 2 and, and Major 2 itself. Uh, and Florida took advantage. They were they got hot that major and ended up taking out Optic and uh, went on a nice little run into Sunday. This match, I don't know... I, Again, kind of feels like a fade match for me. I have Optic as a 75% favorite, uh, so winning three quarters of the time, which if you uh, do the math on the money line, Florida has a a slight, slight edge at plus 340. Um, But I I really still don't love it. Um, The plus two and a half has a little more value than the money line, but I really am not interested in laying minus 210 with a team that's very inconsistent and could get swept just as easily as they could sweep. Um, And yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't see a lot of advantages coming through with Mutineers. Like, Mutineers are a very good control team. They're 14 and 10 on the year. That win percentage ranks third, um, and I have them power ranked as the third best control team. The problem is Optic is like on another level of good when it comes to control. There's no map that they're weak at. Um, six and two on Berlin, six and one on Kavutu, and they love Tusk and they're 12 and two on that. So just the fact that they play it so much, if you're Florida, I guess you go veto that. Hope to get Gavutu, um, but in all likelihood, maybe we'll see a Berlin. Um, but again, doesn't really matter. Optics favored in control. Optic, I have as the second ranked hardpoint team, the second ranked search team. They're arguably better with Prolute on the team. Um, he, he's been amazing so far. And they have had, you know, they had the slip up versus New York. That did happen. But um, yeah, Florida's, I don't know if Florida should be here, right? And it's like eight teams have to make winner's bracket, but. That Florida Boston match on Sunday is like it's hugely controversial for a lot of reasons, but like Boston got hosed, like, and not just in terms of the the round eleven in game five, right? Boston had a glide bomb to work with in round eleven. Game crashes. Now we have to reset the map, and Boston does not have a glide bomb. Hopefully, hopefully, and like this should already be in the game or it should have been in a game a year or two or three ago, but like being able to reset, like customize a game where you can just give a guy a glide bomb and then hit start round, like that should be in the game. So Boston did not get that glide bomb in round 11, Florida end up coming through, but just even without looking at that map, right? Map one, Florida versus Boston. And this is essentially right for a winner's bracket spot. Florida win that Gavudu by two points. So essentially a tie. I think it's fair to just call that a tie when it's that close. Boston come out and win 6-3 in the Bocage. That is a convincing win. Florida come out, with they win 3-1 on control. That's convincing for Florida. So again, I'd say through three maps, that's a straight-up tie. Um, and then the hard point in Game 4, clear victory in Boston's favor, um, winning by 71 on Tuscan. And then you get to that search, and it goes to a round 11. You know, Boston with a glide bomb on Berlin, right? That's huge. If you want to talk about, like, even the map importance with a glide bomb on Berlin, it means the attacking team cannot go to B. Like, 
because you can just glide bomb the building at B by docks and that planter is dead or whoever's backing him up is dead. So that street side is unlocked just with the glide bomb alone. You can four stack A or do like a split between mid and A. But the fact that they didn't have the glide bomb just changes everything. So, I mean, Boston probably should have won that series. Granted, you know, the day before Boston got absolutely smacked by LA Thieves, like maybe the most dominant game of the year. Actually, no, it was like Thieves. I don't know what that was on Boston's part, but Boston probably should have taken out Florida. So. With all that being said, I don't, like, Florida is usually in this clear, like, oh, they're winning, so fade them, or they're losing, so don't, but I really don't know where they're at right now. They're wishy-washy. Optics seem like a team I don't want to get in front of. They're going to want revenge for, you know, Florida taking them out in Major 2, but the price is just really high for both, for the money line, for the minus 2.5, you know, maybe maybe you can talk me into the minus two and a half just with Florida being their opponent, right? Like Florida could come out really flat and optic could just be optic and do what they do and take them out pretty quickly. So yeah, I I think I'm going to stay away from this for the most part. There are futures on these teams that are interesting that we'll talk about later, but um, an interesting match. I think the most lopsided of Thursday is this match. Um, and I think I'm going to stay away unless some crazy movement happens with the the lines. But uh, we'll see if that happens. Even if it goes in Florida's favor, I still don't know if I have the guts to take them. That's a that's a fair point. Um, we'll have to see. I I don't know. I I don't. I I like optic. I think we'll take optic. Three zero though is tough to lay. I'd much rather hit that through individual map spreads, but. I don't know. We'll see. I, I wouldn't mind it. Maybe I'll have something on the minus three and a, minus two and a half, and then something on the individual map spread. So we'll see from there. But yeah, I think this this Florida team is much better. This this optic team is much better than this Florida team. Outside of that, the four losers bracket teams: Breach, Legion, Gorillas, and Ravens. I mean, obviously. So Minnesota. So Breach will play the loser of Minnesota Thieves. If it's Thieves, as we're kind of as we think, well, do you give Breach any chance against either of those teams, or or do yeah. you think you do? Absolutely. Who do you yeah, I mean, yeah. Should, who do you think they should play more? Who do you think they should they be more likely to beat? Oh God! Well, we just saw what they did versus Thieves, and it was the biggest ass kicking of the year. Pardon my French. It was horrible. Um, but Thieves are this team that I mean, they're kind of like Florida, right? They go hot, they go cold. Um. Minnesota, I think if I'm breach, I'd rather take Minnesota, right? Like, I think the worry with Minnesota would be like, again, you you play Thieves, right? Day one, last match of the day, you're waiting a long time. Um, and Thieves could come out hot. And I I know Thieves are not the better team. I I am sure that Minnesota is a better team, but I don't know. Like if Thieves knock out Rocker, I think it's very possible. I think Rocker might fall to losers and be like, man, if <laughs> we get breach, which is nice, but if we slip up here, this this stage that was dominant for us is just like to, to finish O2 at the major is a real possibility that I think could happen. And I mean, think about it this way. Like Minnesota had this roster at the Pro-Am Classic and I believe they went one and two. Like it was whatever. Thieves were red hot at the Pro-Am. They go into this, you know, set of stage matches and they're whatever, two and three. And it's like, okay, that's fine. I, I, I don't know. Like, that that's close in my opinion. I think if I'm Boston, though, like, I just saw what we had against Thieves and it was nothing. And we were better the next day, probably should have beat Mutineers. But I don't know. Maybe Thieves just, like, if you play that same map set, it could be trouble. And uh, I don't know off the top of my head who had coin flip advantage in that match, but again, coin flips matter a little less. Seed advantage matters, matters a little less. So, I mean, if I'm Boston, I'm the underdog either way, but I think I'd rather take Rocker, to be honest. But um, but yeah, th- this Boston team is sliding for sure. One and four this stage. But again, I'm not overly concerned because it seems like throughout this entire year, 
every team not named Optic and Atlanta, or even include those teams, they're going to go through some ruts, right? Thieves were 0-5 going into Major 2, and they bounced back a decent amount since. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like, Minnesota's early season rut happened. Like, they started in loser's bracket in Major 2, their own major, where they had a very easy schedule. And then lost their first round match. Like it, every team goes through these ups and downs. Boston's been a very good team all year. This stage, not so much. It's the same roster. Maybe you take that into like strength of schedule. Maybe they got screwed in the Mutineers match and should be in winners bracket. So Boston is in that middle of the pack. It's unfortunate that they're in losers bracket, but that's what you get for winning one match. Um, but they have a, a legit shot against Minnesota or LA Thieves. But yes, they are underdogs to both in my opinion yeah i um hmm. it's interesting but yeah i i worry about this boston team they're they they are in they are currently in the top eight but like you look at the, the teams behind them you've got seattle you've got new york you've got toronto you got minnesota you got the thieves themselves a lot of momentum for those teams and negative momentum for breach there so i'd be concerned about that um Paris will play the loser of Toronto phase. Uh, we can we skip that one. Uh, <laughs> I think we can skip that one. Um, yeah, yeah, I think we know how that's going to go. <laughs> Flor- loser of Texas and Florida will play LAG. Pff, this team, man, this is... Wh- what is that? Two wins since... No. Is it two wins? No. You know, two wins. Um, they beat. They've yeah. beaten Paris twice. That's it. That's all they've done. They've beaten Paris twice since they won the major. So they beat them at the pro am, and then they beat them once in this stage, right? Yeah, that's. Uh... Yeah, again, no LAG, a good example of a team that got red hot. Granted, that was through a, a roster change, but that was their fifteen change. minutes of fame, and since that, it's been whatever. So, um, yeah, I think LAG, an underdog, clearly to optic. And I do think they'd be an underdog versus Mutineers, but wouldn't shock me if they beat Mutineers because Mutineers are that up and down as well. So what does I that think mean? if you're LAG, you're you're definitely hoping for an optic win because when you're in losers bracket, like you got to win six straight, and to start that against optic would be very tough. So hmm. I've actually got that about fifty fifty. So we'll have to see that LAG well, versus Florida. Florida. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, they're not taking down optic, but if. Seven. They could potentially take over Florida, and that could be that could be a really good value play. Like you might get them at like plus two hundred, maybe even more, maybe plus two hundred, plus three hundred. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I I think I have Florida as a fifty five percent favorite. So yeah, you're you're right. If it, to me that's close to a coin flip. If uh, if Florida is not having a good weekend and decide to go o two, you could make some nice cash just taking LAG in that losers bracket match for sure. So. Yeah, um, and then yeah, not that LEGs look great, but like you're, no, but that that could be a bad good, teams at that point. That's yeah. a bounce back spot for them. Last but not least, loser of Seattle versus Subliners will play London. God, this London team, this team needs a change, and they need a change in direction fast. This team looked so good before. What what happened? Why Paul X left? I talk about it every week with London because they were so fun to watch early in the year. Granted, they didn't have. Paul at the very start they had Gizmo who was solid you know he had his issues bringing Paul X the team looks good if not better decide to move on from Paul put Gizmo back Gizmo still okay not great and then bench him again for Harry Harry's looked fine like I don't know there, there definitely needs to be a switch up I don't know if teams are catching on to their strats more um or just yeah it's again maybe just this is their time where they're going to suck and everyone's going to have a time in the year where they don't look great. Paris, that's going to be the whole year for them. Um, but yeah, London, yeah, a very disappointing team. I would say since major two, really like stage one, major one, the stage two qualifiers that those were phenomenal for London. And they're still, I believe the third team in the CDL points table because that hot start was so hot. Um, but yeah, I mean, kind of flame out at Major 2. They don't make Sunday. Uh, the Pro-Am doesn't go well for them. And then 1-4 and four in this stage, only beating Paris, I believe. Like, 
yeah, it, it has not been great. I do think they bounce back eventually, but um, I don't like either opponent. Like Seattle and New York are like both teams are looking good as of late. So, I, like you cannot make London a favorite over either. Um, but uh, but we've seen crazier things. So we'll see how that one goes. But uh, yeah, I worry that London's just gonna kind of go one and done. I'll, I. I think London probably go one and done. LAG's got a shot if it's Florida. Paris is Paris, so they'll bow out early. And then Boston can, yeah, maybe take out Minnesota or LA Thieves. I uh, I don't know who that would be. Probably Thieves, but uh, I don't know, man. It, it, what's interesting about this major is that I don't know how consequential it's going to be in terms of, like, who makes champs, right? Because... I don't like Paris is in losers bracket. They're not making champs. Like okay, throw them out. You've got London, you've got LAG, and you've got Boston in losers bracket, and those are two teams that are like sitting relatively comfortable in the points table. Let me just pull up the points table real quick. So Phase and Optic kind of far and away the number one and number two team. Those teams will make champs. Then you have three. The third team through the eleventh team is. London at three, New York's down at 11. There's 70 points that separate those eight spots, nine spots, which is not that much, right? So I think with this major, you have London, the three C, or uh, I should say three C, third in the points table. Boston is fourth. LAG is fifth, right? If two of those three bow out right away, heck, maybe all three go one and done in this. You're just going to get a middle of the league that is squished together even more, right? Like, it's going to be crazy heading into uh, to stage four if you have teams three through 11. There's 70 points separating that right now. Say at the end of this major, that could be 50, 40 maybe points that it's the difference between, you know, getting a really good seat at champs and being you know, the first team, second team out of champ. So it's going to be some drama. <laughs> like there's going to be a lot of drama heading into uh, to stage four and the stage four major for sure. But I'm not sure that this major is going to change up the CDL points table so much as it's just going to condense the middle into an even tighter pack. Yeah, I, I think that's that's the point. Um. All right, what do you got for you 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 obviously have your model and you run who you think is going to like odds to win the major. Um what are your th thoughts on that in in terms of um basically in terms of futures here, right? What futures do you have? Which futures are you looking at? What do you what do you like, what do you not like, etc.? Yeah, so the futures I had placed before this week, I had 3 um, I had Optic to win the major at plus 175. I had uh, Minnesota to reach the final at plus 350. And I had Seattle to reach the final at plus 750. And I love all of those still. Um, and I added to that today, I doubled up on Optic to win because their price went from plus 175 to plus 225, which is a huge jump. And I give Optic a 42% chance to win this thing. So, you know, part of that is Optic have looked very good with Prolute, and Atlanta, who is their closest competition, has been fading a little bit. So if you're Optic, right, like this major's there for the taking, right? You get Florida in round one, which is a nice matchup in my opinion. And just like if FaZe isn't playing like themselves right now, you got to worry about a fading FaZe team a hot rocker team that I expect will drop off at some point. And then it's like, okay, Seattle's been all right. Toronto's been all right, but you're still optic. Like you're, you've been far and away the best team all year. Um, Major two wasn't kind to you, but outside of that one weekend, it's, it's been really dominant. So I love optic at plus two twenty five. That's phenomenal value. Um, other, so those are the four, basically. I, I've doubled up on Optic and then Minnesota and Seattle to reach the final, which um, those numbers are clearly gone. Now Minnesota to reach the final is minus 120, not plus 350. I would not take minus 120 now. I Again, if you want to buy into the hotness, go ahead. But 
they're putting Minnesota and FaZe in the same boat right now. Like, a- according to this, and we did just see Minnesota beat FaZe in a 3-0, like, super impressive series. But these odds indicate that Atlanta and Minnesota would be a straight-up coin flip if they played again in a best of five because they're both plus 275 to win the major. They're both minus 120 to reach the final. Like, that, I'm not going that far to say that Minnesota's already there. Uh, we've seen it for, you know, two and a half years with Atlanta phase being a dominant team. We've seen Minnesota in spurts be dominant. And yes, they are right now, but I don't know if I have the faith to say that like, oh yeah, Havoc has turned this team into phase, right? Like that <laughs> seems like a bit much. Um, If you're going to take something now, like again, Optic at plus 225 is phenomenal. Despite all the phase slander, I don't mind phase at plus 275. I have them at a 30% chance to win the tournament or major, I should say. I always like to say tournament, but plus 275, that, that gives you about a 3% edge uh, if you're go- according to my numbers. So there's that. Um, and then you can make a case for some other teams. Toronto at, or I'm sorry, not Toronto, Seattle at 12 to 1, I think makes some sense. I think they're in that bucket of teams with. You know, Toronto with New York, they're they're kind of in that of team starting in winner's bracket that if they get a nice path to the final, you know, if they get hot, stay hot, they've definitely got a shot. But Seattle's 12 to 1 to win the major, Toronto 7, New York is 6 to 1. I'd rather just take the extra payout with Seattle than take those two teams. But if you want to talk yourself into those two teams, that's fine. Um, so yeah, Seattle, I don't hate. I I mention them every time. Florida, right, at 40 to 1, not bad. They get Optic right away, but again, if you're going to play one of these elite teams right away, I'd say better to do it on Thursday than later down the line. If Florida get past Optic, their path to winning the major, at least reaching the final, gets a lot easier. And I would actually prefer Florida just to reach the final at 20 to 1 than to win it at 40 to 1. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of where I'm at. I don't love Minnesota futures right now. I think those prices have gone. Um, Seattle's okay. I think Toronto's maybe a little pricey. Florida's decent value if you want to go back to them. I, I don't think I will, though. Um, and then the rest of the teams, right? Like Thieves, Subliners are the other two that start in winner's bracket. I don't love either of those, really. Um, just kind of inconsistent. And I, I think New York, I know they've been hot, like their record since the Pro-Am has been very impressive, but I'm still not quite buying into it. A lot of close map wins in their series. Um, and then the losers bracket teams, I think you just have to pass up completely. If there's one team from losers that could maybe go on a like crazy, crazy run, um, I think it's Boston. Because, again, I think that first match is winnable. Same thing like LAG. If they get Florida in match one, I think they got a shot to maybe make a little run. We saw them win six straight at major two, but with that was with a different lineup, of course. But, um, but yeah, big ones I like. Optic to win. Um, that's, that's kind of it right now. <laughs> Seattle maybe to reach the major final. Uh, is still a okay price at plus five fifty, but uh, hopefully you got in on on the better prices last week. Yeah, I um I did get some Minnesota prices, so I've got uh I got in at I have Optic plus one seventy five. I we talked about that last week. That was a bad line, and I still don't get how Optic losing to the to an extremely desperate subliners team somehow pushes them back like. 50 basis points that doesn't make sense to me same thing with rocker i mean rocker i i loved rocker to win the tournament at plus 800 plus 275 oh that's a little high for me i i think that i'd want that i'd want that higher i want that at least three four or five to, to bet it um just because again phase is phase and we have not seen optic versus minnesota i think Op- minnesota does beat optic but I just, that plus 275 is a bit too high for me. I don't hate Ultra. I, I, the other thing I do have, I miss, we'll talk about Minnesota in a second. I don't hate Ultra at 7-1, to one, though. I, I actually don't hate that at all. I think that's actually, uh, that's not a bad shot 
Seattle to reach the finals. You said that last time, and they almost did, to to be fair, right? They, they kind of got close if, if Matt Kent had gotten sick there, and they had to call him literally Classic, which I don't even know who, I didn't even know Classic was there. Um, then maybe the, the, then maybe they could have gone to the finals. So, But then again, LEG wouldn't have won, right? So we'd have to look at that. Interestingly enough, though, if you look at the championship lines, to win outright, Bet365, Minnesota, 30-1, to to win the CDL championship. Now, again, they don't have to win it. Right at thirty to one, like again, they're making champs, right? So you're basically getting a team that's one of eight teams to make champs. You're getting them at thirty to one, and at this point, they could very likely make the winners bracket at champs at thirty to one, right? You're and now again, that's actually that's bet three six five. Let me just double check to make sure that is also. Um, let's see if that's the price at Bodog because sometimes some books haven't updated it. I think Bodog was actually worse the last time I saw it. Yeah, Minnesota is actually fifty to one on Bodog to win the CDL championship and to make, to make the CDL finals, they're 25 to one. So that's a number, right? And I mean, again, if they, if they're top four, now, again, I don't know if they're going to keep the same format as last year to basically format as last year was the top four battled it out. And then basically there was like a lower bracket was the other four or I can't remember how they did it. They did. Some, oh no, no, they did the top two. Six and two. So um, yeah, top two had buys. The seven and the eight seeds. Uh, yes, yeah, top two had buys. The seven and the eight seeds started in losers bracket. Kind of a weird setup. Um, but but yeah, well, I, I am interested to see how the bracket plays out because that's the risk, right? You run with Minnesota is like right now they're the seven seed or tied for seventh with Toronto, but. Like, they might not make champs, right? That's the thing is, like, there's so many teams that are competing with each other right now that it's like, you know, despite the great stage three that they've had, they struggle at this major and stage four doesn't go kindly. They could be the 10 seed and out of the tournament completely. Even if they do okay, if they're the seven or the eight seed, that might mean a loser's bracket start. Again, we don't know quite how that's going to work out. Um, But yeah, I mean... That the thing is like you have Minnesota at yeah, you're right, fifty to one. Uh you have like LA Gorillas at fourteen to one. And yes, LA Gorillas are fifth in the CDL points table, but they're only fifteen points ahead of Rocker. They're starting in losers bracket. Like I I would be really, really worried if I was LAG right now, right? Because yeah. it's like you got the major two win. That got you so many CDL points. Your stage one was fine. You picked up some points there as well. But if you get, you know, 10 points out of this entire stage and major, you're going to have, you know, Seattle pass you up, Minnesota, Toronto, Thieves, maybe Florida, maybe New York, maybe like all these teams are right behind you and you're, you're starting in losers bracket and same kind of goes for Boston and London, right? Like they're a little further up the table than LAG, but like, again, you Going one and done hurts, especially if these middle of the points table teams go hot, right? If it's if it's bad weekend for Optic, if it's a bad weekend for Phase, that's really bad news for LAG if LAG also bow out. So, um, yeah, like you can definitely make a case Minnesota fifty to one, twenty five to one, just to reach the final in the championship. Not horrible prices whatsoever. Well, um, I mean, I'll just also. To, it, it's 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 a misprice, right? This is very clearly a line that they have let sit for too long, right? Because yeah. LAG is fourteen to one to win the CDL championship and plus six fifty to reach the CDL. Like, come on, right? Like, there is you can never you cannot convince me. This is very clearly a line they've let sit in the sun too long, and and this is this Minnesota line is like fifth. And again, you can they don't need to win. Right, I mean, they can reach the finals, right? They could potentially. I'm not. They probably won't make top two, so they won't have to buy. But like, you could potentially be three wins away at champs, away from from a two hundred, like a twenty five to one, and then another then win in the best of nine away from a fifty one. And again, like, they could win this major. They can win major two. They can win major three. They could. Yeah, they're set up very nice. Having the one seed sets them up really nicely yeah. to at least pick up, you know, twenty, thirty, maybe forty CDL points from this major. And uh, and yeah, kind of solidify their spot in the middle of the table, if not the upper half. Yeah. So I, 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 it's a misprice, and I think you take advantage of it. And then again, 
they don't need to win, right? You then have hedge equity, equity, right? So you can then, they're playing a team, they play Optic, and they're like, Optic is minus 200 against, go ahead, lay that, right? Go ahead, lay a minus 200, because if, if Minnesota wins and you get a 250 to 1, you get like a 25 to 1 payout, right? So, like, yeah, you, you, you take it, right? Like that 100%. So it's, it's a great position to be in, right? It, it allows you to... It allows you to make bets that you you can't lose. It's a win win bet. You either cash a twenty five to one or you cash a minus two hundred, right? Like that that's totally fine. And that might like Minnesota could be the best team right now. They could be, and if they maybe they take a step back in major four, maybe they lose in the finals to like Optic or something. Maybe we go into the major with Minnesota and Optic as the top two teams, and, and then we go to the final as the champion champs is is that that's a real possibility. So we'll have to see on that. Now, one other one, two other futures I'd love to talk about here. Rookie of the year and regular season MVP. Now, this is where it gets interesting because right now, we talked about this before, but Capital is even. He's plus 100 or even to be rookie of the year. Sid at plus 250, Nero at plus 350, Predator at plus 800, Dave Patty 10 to 1, Nasty 20 to 1. Gizmo used to be on the list. He's gone now. Gravity at... Uh, would look at five hundred to one in Jimbo at five hundred to one, so those ones are gone. But I like I really like Sib here now. Like this Boston team is in free fall. The Seattle team is not in free fall. I like give me Sib or maybe Pred even. I don't hate either of those to be rookie of the year. I think this is again another line that is not moved. Again, this is like in in the NFL when you like th- that moved quick. Right, like Mac Jones was, and I had Mac Jones, and I'm still salty about this too. Mac Jones was going to be rookie of the year, and then he had they lost to the Dolphins. They lost to the Dolphins, and then Jamar Chase had a ridiculous game against, I think it was the Ravens or the Chiefs. I can't remember. It was either the Ravens or the Chiefs, and they played I in the regular season. I think. Sorry, I want to say it was the Chiefs. It might have been yeah. the Chiefs. <laughs> it was like a 200 receiving yard, like 250 receiving yards in a game, or some some ridiculous stat, and and then he just took over and won, right? And I don't, I I suspect like the thing of it is, put yourselves in whoever's voting for this. And to be honest, I'm not completely sure whoever is voting for this. I'm assuming it's the casters. I'm assuming it's league officials. So like, put it's yourselves players maybe. Ah, yeah. uh, maybe players. Players can get a bit iffy because a mix like, of all of that. Yeah, a mix yeah. of that. But, like, if you're – put yourselves in the shoe of, like, Miles or Chance or something. Are you voting for Capsital or are you voting for Sib right now, right? Like, it's – and again, the thing of it is, although it says Rookie of the Year in the name and on, on the award itself, that's not what you're betting on, right? You're basically b- betting on the best rookie on the best team that had a rookie, if that makes sense, right? And I think that's basically what you're doing. And again, like, the – if, the, if a rookie is having a good year and they're on a good team, then they win this award. And honestly, Boston is in extreme danger of not making champs. I think I, if I'm Boston, I'm actually very concerned. I think Boston could go 0-1 out with this major. And if that's the case, then Sib should be favored. And if he's not favored, it's because they just won't adjust this line, which because they have not adjusted this line very much at all. So I think, uh, yeah, I think that's a that's a buy for there. Potentially Sib or Pred. What are your thoughts on this? Do you see value on them as well, or, or not? Yeah, um, I I do remember talking about Capital, uh, even money. I don't think I love that anymore, and I didn't take it. So I'm happy I I did not, um, take that as I was saying it. My argument with Cap was just like, this Boston team has been good throughout the year. And the, you know, Seattle team at the time was a little up and down. The players on Seattle are, you know, pretty balanced. Like part of this MVP award, right, is like which rookie carried their team the most. And I think another qualifier is like this team has to make champs, right? They have to be on a somewhat competitive team. Um, Because like say Temp was a rookie, like Temp would like would he be the rookie of the year favorite he's amazing this year but he's playing on paris and paris doesn't win so right that it's like you got to be on a winning team or somewhat competitive team and you have to like shoulder the load and i think cap fit that description now that boston's sliding a little bit i do think even money is not great um because yeah this race is really really close uh we updated our grades sheet just recently to include the stage three performances for each player 
And yeah, the, the highest rookie on the list, if you don't include Prolute, is Sib, and actually Sib is right behind Prolu, just two spots. So if the award happened today, right, you got to think Sib is the favorite, and that's how I kind of like to think about this, right? Is like maybe Sib should be the guy at even money, and you shuffle the other guys around however you want. But Sib is, you know, twelfth in the CDL in terms of overall uh, grade for us, uh, number one among rookies. If you take out Prolu, if you take out Scrappy, he only played a handful of games. Um, right behind Sid is Dave Patty. The thing with Dave is that I think he's on a worse team, and I think Florida Mutineers split like good games between a lot of play. Like sometimes it's Dave, sometimes it's Skies. A lot of times it's Awakening. Um, it's never usually vivid, but it's tough to say that like, oh, Dave Patty is you know the guy who has helped the mutineers get to where they are, which isn't even a great spot right now to begin with. So, you know, Dave Patty's listed out there 10 to one, not horrible, but like, you're really going to need a mutineers, you know, like hot streak to end the year. And you're going to need a lot from Dave Patty to do that. So not in love with that. Um, yeah. Capital slid down the board. Obviously that, that goes, you know, hand in hand with Boston, not performing as well as of late. But still a good player, um, but at even money, I don't love it. Sib at plus 250 is decent, um, but I think I do like Predit 8-1 uh, to one a little more, right? Seattle, again, a team where sometimes it's it's a bit mixy like it is with Florida. Some games it's Sib, some games it's Pred, some games it's Mac. It's rarely accuracy, but there's kind of a three-headed monster there. Sib has been the best, I would say, so far throughout the year. But I don't think Pred is that far behind. And the difference in price between them is 250 versus 800 So I do think I like Pred's value the most out of anyone on this board. You also have, like I mentioned, Dave at 10 to 1. Nasty's 20 to 1. That's like, there's no way that's happening. Um, we actually grade Nasty as a below average player, a, a pretty significantly below average. He has a 95 grade, which... Uh, ranks 41st among all pros who have played this year, uh, a 100 grade bre being perfectly average. So below average um, on a team that is in a downfall right now. So again, if you're taking him, you're essentially saying like, all right, London are going to bounce back in a huge way at major four. And it's going to be because of nasty. And I just can't really see that happening. I think if anything, it's going to be Afro goes off. Zero improves to what he looked like earlier this year. Maybe Gizmo comes in again, and then they look okay. We'll see how that all plays out. Um, and then, yeah, a couple Paris guys at 500 to 1. That's not going to happen because it's Paris. So I don't think a bad idea would just be like take Sib at plus 250, take Pred at 8 to 1, hope Seattle finishes the year relatively well, makes champs. And, yeah, just think it's it's one of them. Um but, uh, oh, yeah, Nero is on this list, too, at plus 350, which if you want to throw away money, like, go ahead and do that. We rank Nero 51st in the CDL uh, at a 91 grade. So, yeah, it's not him just because Capsital's so much better than him. So, yeah, I, I think it's Sib or it's Pred. It's one of the Seattle guys for sure. But uh, the value on Pred, I think, is just a little better. Yeah, I... Uh... I agree with that. My only concern, though, is because this line has been updated for very long. Would pro? I think Prolude has never actually played a CDL game, so theoretically, he could be in I, the running for rookie of the year. He could be added. That's that's definitely a thing that could happen. Um, and he's been very, very good so far. Um, the thing with him, though, right, is like he might get benched for Illy. Um, and yes, Optic's been amazing, but they were already amazing without him. So that like improvement, right? We haven't seen that improvement. Optic is a team that, you know, they have a very deep team where some games it's dashy, some games it's shotsy, Skump pops off here and there. Um, and yeah, Prolute says he's had his fair share as well. So he plays on a very good team, which might hurt him and he might get benched even though he's been playing well. So a lot in the air with him, I, like Sib and Pred, you lock them up for that Seattle roster. I think they've, throughout the course of the year, proven that they should be on the roster, and they're very, very good players. So 
as long as they make champs, I do think it's one of them, barring a crazy like Boston resurgence where Cap looks like what he did in stage one, then that could throw a monkey wrench into this. But um, but yeah, I like the Seattle guys a lot. Another one more one more future before before we go today. Um, CDL champion, uh, so COD CDL championship regular season MVP. So this would obviously be determined before the CDL championship. This is another line that has been sitting out a little bit too long. Shotzi plus 150, Selian plus 200, Dashy 3 to 1, Simp 500, a plus 500, Scum plus 800, a BZ 10 to 1, RCD's 12 to 1, Methods 12 to 1, Hydra 14 to 1. I'll draw one attention. This name isn't even actually on Bavada. You, you can have other on, others on request, but if you go to Bet365, you can get attached at 500 to 1 plus five, uh, 500,000. He is sitting beside Priestad, also 500,000, Vivid at 500,000, atta- Accuracy at plus 500,000, and then the entirety of the Paris Legion team. <laughs> They literally all they they literally the bottom four options. Ah, uh, that's actually kind of funny though. I mean, honestly, attach and again looking at at the, our player grades, he is the sixth best, best sixth best player in the team, um, the sixth best player in the league. Scrappy is number one, which again you exclude him because he's played one game. Celium is number two, but again, remember MVP is not necessarily best player; it's best player on the best team. Right, so you've got Selium, you've got Dashy, you've got Temp again. It's not going to be Temp. Temp isn't making champs. Then you've got Methods, but Boston in trouble to make champs. Attach, if they win this major, and then they if they were to win it, maybe maybe win major four. Like I gotta think, because like Attach in the last couple weeks has been amazing. He has been absolutely amazing, particularly in control. There has been two games, and I I haven't gone fully back to rewatch them yet. But there has been two games in control when I'm like, they're done. There's no way. And Attach somehow pulls it out and makes just magic happen. Somehow they win They win the round. And it's always been like a, an attacking round somehow. And then they just pull, he pulls a rabbit out of his hat basically. And then they win the round. And I have no idea how that's even possible. But it's it's crazy. And I, I think that, I, like, and again, this isn't like, I'm not telling you to bet like a 10 to one or a, like this is an extreme long shot, but at 500,000, like plus 500,000. Yeah. You, you have to, right. You have to. Yeah. So the thing with Minnesota, right. The case against it, it's hard to make a case against 500 to one, but the case against that would be right. Like Minnesota uh, attach has been amazing all year. Um, It's not until he switched to the AR that he's been, even better and he's getting more recognition now um i remember we talked early in the season about minnesota we went through kind of their player grades to start the year and i think the overall consensus was like dandy is the best player on the rocker and he is still very good um but attach was not getting enough respect and that was with running smg he was still high on this list now he's running an ar he creeps his name even higher up um, but the thing, right, with Minnesota's hot streak, it's it's part of a team change that brought in havoc. So people might point to like, oh yeah, Minnesota did go really hot, but it's because of that havoc line or that havoc, you know, call up. The attach roles change, right? There's value in that that he's that flexible that he can do both at a very high level. Um, but right, the thing with Minnesota is like you're gonna need him to win a major, probably this one. Uh, you're going to need a good stage four, and you're going to probably still need some sort of fall off between Celium and Dashy. Those two have been amazing all year. Um, the thing with Dashy, I think it'd be easier to see a, a quote unquote fall off with Dashy. And I don't mean so much a fall off like those guys get worse as it is like someone else on their team shows up and, and shows that like, oh, they're the MVP of that team, right? For Optic, it could be Shotzi. Shotzi's very high on our list in terms of grades. He's ninth in the league. So if Shotzi goes absolutely nuclear this major and has a really good stage four, right, the whole perception of who's the best player on Optic could be Shotzi and not Dashy, or that's maybe still up for debate now. Um, with Atlanta, right, it's it's interesting, right? Because we, we have Simp, who had such a good year last year, 
kind of clear cut MVP throughout the year. He was just so dominant. Now this year he's still good. Um, he's 19th on our list of names. If you you know exclude those rookies that are in there, he'd go up to 17th. But it's still like, eh, like you want more out of Simp. Um, Abizi hasn't been great either. So maybe there's part of it is like Abizi's not getting enough first bloods or enough damage in those fights where Simp can clean up and 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 get two guys easily because of that help that he's had. But yeah, I, I think if FaZe don't win a major, if you know, if Dashy falls off a little bit or Shotzi comes up and and takes away some of the glory or whatever you want to call it. Um, or if it's Scump or if it's Prolute, right, that that goes really hot for Optic, that kind of muddies the waters between them, and Minnesota stays hot, makes champs easily, and Attach keeps doing what he does, then, yeah, I I don't mind the Attach MVP. I think he's a likable guy. Like, if it's between, like, Attach and Celium at the end of the year or something like that, like, I don't know. I, I think people would love to give it to Attach. Um, but again, it, it's 500 to 1. It, it's crazy good value, right? Because even if you think there's a 1% chance Attach wins the MVP, that's still better than 100 to 1 odds. So, um, so yeah, I, I like it. I, I can't imagine that line will stay put for a lot longer if they pay attention to their lines. So definitely take that. But well, just know that there's still a lot that's got to happen. Uh, update on that. So I, as you were talking, I actually did place a $10 bet on Attach MVP to $10 to win $5,010. And, there you go. <laughs> and uh, it actually it wouldn't let me place it at first. It said $0.86 cents we put on it, and then the other remainder needs to be approved by a trader. And then it, it, they approved it. So shout out to that guy, whoever that is, who approved that. But maybe, the, <laughs> maybe someone's going to be like, why did he bet this? thing and then they're like oh god we haven't updated these in like a month so we'll see i i i i again you, you're never gonna have like you you tell me there's a half decent chance of of winning something at 500 to one i'll take that like i'll i'll i'll, I'll pay ten dollars for that any day that's fine um but no we'll we'll see again it's not a huge bet um but it's it's a, it's a fun bet and I, honestly i like i can see a scenario in which that happens right if phase doesn't win a major if Minnesota wins a major, and then if Major Four, if Minnesota were to win Major Four, or maybe even Toronto were to win Major Four, and like maybe we get like a repeat of of Major Four from last year, where we get like a Minnesota Toronto, but Toronto gets revenge on them, or some, some like maybe like something like that. Like I I could see attach because like especially if Dallas falls, uh, Dallas Texas same thing basically. If if De Texas falls off a bit, Optic falls off a bit. Yeah, I mean. Methods might not make champs. Temp might not make champs. Selling, they're going to be low on phase. Like, yeah, you're right. Shotzi and Shotzi and Dashi are the the issues, right? They are a really big issue. But whenever you see like this, Attach has just made ridiculous plays. Like, obviously, we know Shotzi has, and we know Dashi also has as well. But we've seen just some insane magic in the last couple of weeks with this Minnesota team. I, I, uh, I, I, I can't ignore that. I can't say no, no, no. It's this is. I, I got to put something on, on attach there. Um, other than that, I think that's about it for us for this week. I think um, we've, we've talked a lot about uh, this major and I'm really, ex I'm honestly very excited for this major. I think this could be a really good major. The stage is set. I think Minnesota and Dal, uh, Minnesota and Dallas keep calling them Dal Minnesota and optic are on a collision course. I think, um, I think Toronto is somewhere in there as well. Phase is is reeling. I don't know what the problem with Phase is, um, but it's it's gonna be interesting. It's it's gonna be an interesting major. It's gonna be an interesting. It's gonna be an interesting major. There's a lot of interesting teams. We're gonna see how far can New York go. Like a large part of whether or not New York is even gonna make champs is gonna be determined in, by mon by Monday. Well, actually by by Sunday night. We'll we'll have a really good idea as well. New York like New York can basically clinch champs by having a good major here functionally. Boston and and Boston and London and and LEG specifically, if they don't win a couple matches here, they're in real trouble to make champs. And uh, and yeah, I mean, obviously we know that like we know the good teams that are going to make champs, right? Like we know Texas, like Optic is going to make it. We know Toronto's going to make it. Um, phase is obviously going to make it. Toronto, you just said Toronto's. 
They're eighth in the points table. I should say tied for second. Yeah, but they've but they've like... come back to they seem to be coming back to form. To be fair though, they actually did have a really e- that's actually an interesting point too. So I suspect Toronto will make champs. They did have a pretty easy schedule. Next, see the thing is again, remember our our, our pet conspiracy theory that is definitely true that they give the teams who are hosting the majors easy schedules. And like Toronto had a really easy schedule. This this group, right? They had Paris, they had LEG, they had Minnesota, Florida, or not not Florida, Minnesota, New York, and who else did they have? Someone else that was London. London. They had London. They had London. Yeah. Next stage is when it gets tricky. Then they can they they have Phase and Optic next stage. So yeah. they have Phase Optic next stage. I think they have. That's tough. That's that's pretty tough. Yeah. But... Yeah, the the thing I gun to my head, I do think Toronto also makes champs, but it's gonna be close, right? Like we talked about this major, the middle is gonna get squished if London, Boston, and LAG do not score that many points and everybody underneath them does score some points. If Atlanta and Optic struggle, that, you know, gets even tighter. Um but yeah, we, we know Paris won't be there. Um I I do worry a little bit about New York, right? Like, they do have a tough first match. Like, Seattle's a good team. There's a shot that New York loses immediately to Seattle um, at that point. And that's, thir- that's the first game on Thursday. So we could be here, you know, Thursday at whatever time that would be, like 6 o'clock, going like, oh my gosh, New York might not make champs. And their pro am classic run was all for naught. But I have to look up again. Who would New York play if they lose that game? Is it Paris? Um, no, they would play London, which should be a bounce back game. But again, London's not Paris. It's not a free win. So that's an interesting talking point. Is just New York's got to have a good major. Um, and then it's like, will any of these, you know, London, Boston, LAG, will any of them kind of make a little loser's bracket run and and keep their spot at the top of the table? We'll see. I, I think a lot of them will struggle. But um, if you can get a win or two, that's that's big in the end because I think at the end of the day, like the, the difference between the eight and the nine seed for champs might be five, 10, 20 CDL points. So these matches are, are hugely crucial. Yeah, I... Um... I th- this is going to be an interesting mat. This is going to be an interesting major, very, and it sets the ground up perfectly for for next week and, and for for the, for the last stage and, and champs, obviously. And this is make or break for a lot of teams, right? Like if you're Toronto, Thieves, Florida, Seattle, New York, this is this is your season on the line. And also at the same point in time, if you're Boston, if you're London, if you're LAG. You're, this is also your season on the line. You you have the edge. You have a couple extra points, but those points could be you go. All those those three teams are all starting in losers bracket, right? You lose. A couple teams go a little deep into the into the into the round. A couple couple teams go a little deep into the tournament. Suddenly you're looking at eight. You're suddenly you're in like a three way tie for yeah. eighth, right? You're just watching teams pass you at that point, yeah. and that cannot feel good. <laughs> like LAG must not be comfortable. Like if LAG somehow makes champs, like. I mean, if they somehow like, because the thing is, when you look at the standings, it's it's really kind of crazy. Because when you look at these standings, it's like you always wonder like what points are required to like to to hold on, right? So like you've got you've got Phase and Optic at two ten and two o five combined at each, right? So you've got Phase with a five point lead over Optic, which is weird because Optic actually won the the event and phase has not won the event which to be fair it's only an extra 15 points but optic does have a better regular season record so the thing of it is you also have to factor in the fact that it's 65 points to win a major and then you can you get 65 plus 50 to go undefeated in the stage and then another 65 to win major uh to win major four right so you at the maximum number of points any team can win is 65 50 65 you go only each, the maximum a team can win is 180 points. That is the maximum number of points a team can win. So at this point... Paris cannot catch Optic or Phase. <laughs> no, they cannot. That much we know. <laughs> they, can come, they can come close. They can come... So Paris cannot... Can, at best, Paris can come third. 
That is the best thing. Or can they will finish 12th, Robert. That's yes. my guess. <laughs> One Somewhere between there. Somewhere between 3rd and 12th, but more likely 12th. No, but this is the thing, right? So at a certain point, right? And again, once you take out this major, so 50 plus 65, so assume you don't get no points for the major, 115 points, right? So Paris, assuming Paris immediately loses to Toronto or FaZe, which again, good luck, have fun. 15, 115 plus 20, they're at 135. So basically, actually they could still theoretically come fourth. But at that point though, like if if the team in eighth, so the team in eighth has 100 points, right? So if tr if the team in eighth has 140 points, Paris is eliminated. Done. It's over. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, we're we're gonna get some some uh, some clinching scenarios for Paris relatively soon. It might not be uh, at this major or after this major, but probably very quickly into stage four. I think we would yeah. see the the doors for them. But um, but well, yeah, I I really think you're gonna have eleven teams. I mean, you'll have some teams that have locked it up, but you'll have the rest of the teams that are all you know, within the three and 11 spot is just, it's so close. And, uh, and yeah, every match is going to matter so, so, so much. Yeah. And just like the tiebreakers just to get winner's bracket for major four, hugely crucial. Um, and yeah, major three is obviously going to set up, set that up well. And uh, yeah, very exciting stuff moving forward. That, that's the one thing is because between third and, and 11th is 70 points. And and the problem is, you said something interesting there when you said that every match matters, and and that's completely true. But at the same point, should every match matter? Right? Like that's the thing, right? Like there is so much importance placed on each and single, each and si each single every like each and every single basically group match of one of those five group matches. It's so each of those matters so much than each thing at the major. Like again, if there was more games. You just the weight on a lot of these matches would be much less, and people could actually like enjoy them. Like basically, your entire champs future wouldn't rest on this one like group match game that you play one like you play one game a weekend, and like that could like I I don't know. Again, that's a longer term ex expansion discussion thing for the future and how to fix this league and this format. But yeah, it's uh it's interesting, and and that's that's something to to discuss probably in the future. But yeah, it's this is the this is the format they've designed and. It's doing what it's intended, right? It was designed to create a lot of chaos, right? Because you have between eighth and third, you have a forty-point difference that could easily be eaten up by this major, right? That's Ravens. They could go 0-1. Ultra is at hundred points. They could easily go relatively deep, get forty points. Bam, Toronto's in third, right? Like that's how crazy this major could be. Minnesota also at hundred. They could easily, they could actually probably likely to be third or better at the end of this major, right? So it's it's crazy how much. It is crazy how much, how, how how quickly some of this could start forming up, forming up. But anyways, those are discussions for another day. Thank you for coming and, and listening to us talk and, and ramble about all this stuff. Um, we'll be back before, before week one of stage four. So a couple weeks off after this, the next uh, major doesn't start until I believe June 24th, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, the next major, the first game of the next major is is theoretically the, um, there is another season four of Vanguard drops two days before. So there is one last shot, one last chance for us to get actually decent maps and get a fourth, a fifth hard point map. So <laughs> we got one shot, uh, but we'll, we'll have to see. That's going to be interesting. And again, the last stage is, is going to be set. And then we have that, the major and then champs. So Thank you for uh, thank you for joining us today, uh, Ryan, and thank you everybody for listening. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in a couple of weeks.